Welcome back to the shipyard. Today, we're taking a look at the Prakash. This is the Mirror Universe Cardassian Galar class from the Resistance's Futile Boosters. Try saying that five times fast. You'll either get uh, winded or tongue-tied. One of the two. Pretty standard Galar class. Evade, target lock, scan. One crew, two weapons, and attack. Two crew weapon tech would have been better, but eh, c'est la vie. Uh, the named ability here is actually pretty good. Uh, after you move, if you are within range one of a friendly ship, you may immediately perform one of the actions listed on your action bar as a free action. Now, you sit there and you go, why would I want to do that? What good is that named ability? Well, the reality is that you can get a free evade target locker scan, and you still have your normal action to either do a second action bar action or to do a captain action a crew action tech re-enable something at worst you could target lock and fire torpedoes every round i can think of worse things to do now, is that the ideal setup for this ship absolutely not but it is a function that the ship serves Gold Ducat is probably better, but not all ships can have Gold Ducat or a different free action captain, and sometimes you make some compromises. So, the downside here is that you are limited to a Galar class movement dial, which is, well, not good. Two and three red turns, five straight, I mean, that's something. Uh, 180 firing arc, again, I mean, we'll, we'll take that. But it's just not all that special. Your generic loses a shield, loses a weapon slot, saves you two points, but 24 versus 26, no special abilities. I'm not running generic gallers. I'm just not. Sorry. Our captain on this pack is Elam Garrick, skill 3, no talent slot, two points. It's okay. During the roll attack die step of the combat phase, you may discard one of your crew upgrades to roll plus one attack die. Meh. If it was discard a crew to add a hit result, I might be more in favor of that, but 50-50. Even say we've got a target lock, great, 75% chance. I think my crew's a little more valuable than that. Not worth it, especially on a skill three captain. Can't vouch for him. Our tech, cloaking device. Well, Makes sense. It's a Galar. It's the mirror universe. Uh, eh. Four points. Pretty standard cloak, except it's plus five points for any non-mirror universe ship. So what we have here is a cloaking device for four points that can go on any mirror universe ship. This came out before most mirror universe ships. And in fact, I think it was our introduction to the Mirror Universe. Subsequently, we've received a Romulan Warbird, a Vorchok class. So the, the need for a cloak is not huge. But if you want to cloak the Regent's flagship that doesn't natively have a cloaking device, this is a good option. If you want to cloak the ISS Defiant, again, a good option. Uh, if you'd like to cloak the Avenger, well, that needs shields, so you'd get, you'd have to add a shield somehow. An option you could figure out. There's enough options to cloak Mirror Universe ships. Again, cloak is not great, but we've got new rules coming. It might make cloak better, and then this card sees some amount of play. Who knows? We'll see. Our first weapon is Dorsal Weapons Array. Uh, two points, three dice, range one to two, 360 fire. Uh, for three dice, not great on the Galar, but for some other Mirror Universe ships, I could potentially see it. I'm thinking the NX class, maybe the Pasture, if we get a weapon slot there. I know there's better options, but this at least would give us 360 fire. Not bad on the Terex. Or the generic Romulan wouldn't be bad on the Tokat or a generic Vorcha. It's something to think about. 
The other weapon, Forward Weapons Grid, 4.6 dice, range 1 to 2. It's a disable, but you have to split the attack between two different ships. And you have to put at least two dice into each ship. And you take an ox. So, things to work on, but at best you're getting four dice against somebody. But you have to factor what that's worth. Again, it could be good on, like, the NX, but I don't know that that's worth four points. Something to think about. Last card in this pack, remember it was a blind booster, so really small, tight-knit. 30-point blind booster at that. It's Tashiar, two-point crew. Uh, if your ship was just destroyed, discard this card. Target an enemy ship within range one to three. Immediately make one free attack against that ship with four dice. If the target ship is in your forward firing arc, that ship rolls minus two defense dice against this attack. Range one to three, 360. And then a bonus if they're in your forward firing arc. Fantastic card. I love this version of Tasha. Two points for a bonus attack if you die. Yes, ultimately your goal is not to die, but sometimes death is inevitable, and if you build a ship that you just know is going to die, sometimes that shot from Tasha makes the difference in a game. Tasha is definitely somebody to consider, and... Oftentimes will keep a ship alive because your opponent goes, I really don't want to mess with that. So overall, the Prakash. It's not the best ship, but it's an okay ship. It's not the best pack as a whole, but it's an okay pack. It's got one fantastic card. Again, it's not top of the top of competitive play, but it's still a pretty good card. It's a blind booster. It's an almost three-year-old blind booster. It's getting tougher and tougher to acquire. If you don't have it, the only thing you'd ever need to track down is Tasha. The Prakash, it's nice, but Tasha, she's the reason you'd need them. The good news, those are at least unique cards, and people are typically willing to part with unique cards. So, uh, hopefully that's good news for anyone who's trying to get a hold of this, that you would be able to acquire one if you so desired. All right, that's it for me. Thank you guys for watching. Until next time, we'll see you around the shipyard. Take care.